Okay, so thanks folks. Um, so let's get today's lecture started. So in the last lecture, uh, we discussed about a very important concept about entropy in terms of mixing. And we sort of uh, go through all the differences in the lattice theory and compare to how does different mixing impact the um, the entropy of different degree of mixing, right? We discussed quite a lot about how does uh, different polymer um, occupy different lattice spaces and how does this lattice spaces help us to understand um, what happens to our polymer. Um, so today's lecture going to go a little bit deeper into uh, enthalpy influence in terms of mixing. If you recall, we started the, a little bit discussion in the enthalpy, but we didn't have time to go into a lot of detail. So in today's lecture, the goal is to explain to everybody what is the entropy role, and we hope to uh, finish the lattice theory to get the delta G by combining the enthalpy and entropy contribution. Additionally, we would like to talk about um, the real Flory Hagen theory, because up to now, if you look at uh, what is regular um, solution theory, we only discuss about um, mixture of small molecular. And to be more exact, we are talking about mixture of solvents molecular between solvents A and solvents B. And in order to get the, your real cases and relate to our polymer physics, we need to talk about the mixture of polymer um, with solvents. So one big difference is solvents with polymer versus solvent solvent is polymer has connectivity. As you can predict that uh, the entropy in terms of mixing will decrease quite a lot because you have a mixture of the polymer. Um, because polymer is also connected with each other. So you will see in more detail in today's lecture. All right, so let's get started in, in today's parts. Okay, so everybody see it, right? In, in this part, we're still in the regular solution theory, and I want to do a quick review of what we discussed in the last lecture. Um, the topic is, as you can see, the delta S is influenced by a very simple equation where you can get delta S equals to K is Boltzmann constant and it's almost symmetric. X1 line X1. X1 is the um, the volume fraction of the molecule 1. X2 is the volume fraction of the polymer uh, as Hohmann 2. So when being combined in those two, you can get what is called a delta S of mixing. And we started talking about the regular solution theory. We talk about there's very important to get interaction between your polymer and solution. So this interaction parameter, which is a cohesive energy density, defines as how much energy it takes to evaporate your molecular is equally important. We discussed that there is two type of um, three type of actually interactions. One is a polymer polymer interaction. Uh, we call it W11. You can think about it totally and totally interacting itself. Then you have W22, and last one is W12. is the interaction with between cross different species. Okay, so, and we talked about how to get the enthalpy of before mixing, because we always consider delta H. Delta H means your differences before and after mixing. Okay, so we the energy of before mixing is very easy because for each component, so you think about a beaker of toluene and beaker of hexane, and their interaction is very simple. They only have molecular um, interacting with itself, and that's why delta H is very simple, where you only need to consider, as shown here, How many neighbors are on it? Z is sort of the coordination number. So we talked about um, square lattice have Z about four, and hexagonal lattice you have Z about six. 
and M1 is number of molecules in the system. So, um, you know, if you have a billion of molecules, then you need to consider how many neighbors of have multiplied by a billion divided by two. This two is just tell you um, this single interaction requires two contact points. That means you have two components or two molecules need to work on each other. W11 is just a generic term we define that's energy, including any sort of energy. Um, you know, the dipole dipole interaction, um, if you have hydrogen, then it's hydrogen interaction bond. And all those actions are generalized as W11. W11 is just a generic term. And we got what is before mixing and we got a little bit time in the last lecture to talk about what is after mixing but we didn't go into a lot of detail and I ask everybody to go through a homework how do you um, calculate and understand what the energy after mixing so anyone can give me an uh, answer if you have tried to think about the problem Okay, did, did it change anything or not at all? It's definitely better. It's still um, a little fuzzy. But it's definitely readable now. Not the equation, but at least the words. Sure, sure. Let me enlarge the equation when I uh, talk about it. So is it better now? I make the screen bigger? Yeah, I can read them now. Okay. Thanks for the feedback, though. Yeah, I'll make sure whenever I talk about each part, I highlight them, then everybody can see them. Okay, all right. Yes, awesome. So we we sort of left it here. So, what is the solution state in entropy? So that's a question that I want everybody to think about. I don't think everybody has a good answer. I have heard so far. So let me talk about it. Um. So in the mixture now, let me draw here. Now you think about a box that has both A, which is solid, and you have circle randomly distributing around. So how do you consider the interaction? Because clearly it's a little bit complicated than normal case. You have not only, probably it's easy. I'll go back to a slide where they have a clear drawing. So here. In the in the lattice box here, um, as you can see, there is two cases where you can see there is a lattice has interaction between cross A B and is lattice between the, uh, in the same material. Hey Brian, you got a question? Was the question you were asking how we can find the Boltzmann distribution? No, no. Uh, the question specifically is, what is the enthalpy after we mixed it, and how do we consider and approach the enthalpy? after mixing. We talked about what is before mixing, it's quite straightforward, right? But what is not clear is what is enthalpy after mixing. Okay, so why don't we continue a little bit and I'll discuss what they could be um, like. Um, what do, now, what do you need to do is to consider how many of these interactions that you could have between different species, right? So you would have a possibility of having the molecular interacting with itself, and you would have the possibility of molecular interacting with the other molecular. So we can just uh, write this as you would have the chances of polymer, interacting with itself we can write as x11 if we just consider the white uh, the red molecular for now just to consider this one let me mark it if we just consider this one as i imagine i'm this particular red dot so i'm sitting here this is it. professor gu i'll write my name there so this now belongs to me if i'm sitting here I would have two options, right? I have would have interacting with another neighbor of me or another neighbor of, let's call it the 
um, use a gender maybe to explain I can have another red molecule or another male sitting around me or a white molecule or another female so what the chances of uh, interacting with a male and a female totally depends on how many population is in the solution or how many population for example if I sitting in classroom if I randomly pick a seat to go there sit first then the 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 rest of seat were taken by the class and how many of the opportunity if I'm sitting next to a female student and male student depends on the class ratio right if my class has majority of male then I have more chance to sit in next to a male student so saying here the interacting parameter will depends on um, the volume fraction of your molecular okay so the volume fraction is would be um, we can define as x1 x1 will be the number of the molecular one m1 divided by n m is the, e the total number of the molecular right so that's my chances to interact with the male student and I can add a uh, x2 volume percentage of 2 that means that's the chance of interacting with a female students okay so that if I consider the the red molecular that's the total opportunity and how many total of them so we need to consider there's total number of m1 and there is number of the lattice side right so can everybody understand this equation it's basically think about what the enthalpy for a uh, given random red dots in the material system okay any feedback or any question feel free to ask and we should also consider equally for any given white dots and what's the opportunity for it to interact right so if we combine those two then we would have um, you know the total number of interactions so now let's go back to where our equation is where we left off this pretty much um, is another way to summarize it um, we can also consider the context points between the 1 1 and the 1 2 and we just need a count total number of contact between 1 1 and the 1 2 that's one good way to consider that as well okay so in this case we can also consider how many contacts between molecular one with itself or the red versus red and two two is where it's white versus white and one two is white versus uh, the black and this is just a means number of contact very generic and number of contact as I already mentioned that this contact of one one is gonna be number of contact C11 will be equals to total number of M1 multiplied by um, the volume fraction of uh, the species 1 and multiplied by um, N, uh, Z is a coordination factor and divide by 2 so that should be the same as I wrote to everybody at the beginning so let's add them everything together you would have then ended up contact one one minus contact one two. So here is a display arrow. When we put long symbols, there is a chance it's being cut off. So here you can see we can now get the total number of component M1. So everybody understand what this particular section means. It's counting how many contacts between C11 or contact um, molecular one versus itself. You get Z. Z is again the coordination number. If it's square lattice, that is four, and M is total number of component one. And if we wanna, this is more or less generic term because we need to minus one two in the all the contacts you have m1 multiplied by z that's just the, all the numbers of your component couldn't have right minus one two 
So either I'm contacting, if I'm sitting in a classroom, that means either I'm sitting next to a female or a male student. So if I add them together, this will be my number of me and total of number of letters sign. Equally, you can write as C12. You can get this very generic equation as well. The difference is here, M2 is number of in, uh, molecular number two. So now you can add two parts together, get the equation below. And what this equation basically tells you how many possible contacts you can achieve. It's a little bit long equation, but it's quite straightforward. This will be number of contact between one, two, multiplied by contact interaction, one, two. And this will be total number of contact of C11. Is basically we expanded using the equation above and saying here this would be C22. Um, we just expand it. If we rearrange it a little bit, we can get what we show in the bottom, and this will be a very important and interesting equation. Why? Because we need sort everything has uh, M1 term to here, and sort everything we have um, N2 terms to here. And x1 is basically, as I mentioned, that's a volume fraction. And it's equals to m1 divided by m1 plus m2. OK? With that, let's give you a good start point to understand what is the complex interaction after we mix it. What, what this says is the mixing of the energy depends on how many molecules of M1 you put in? N1 is basically a toluene molecular number. Coordination number Z. X1 is volume fraction of X1, W11, plus Z, X2, W12. So this is the exactly the same equation I wrote in, in next to that square lattice. If we pull the Z number out, this is just X1, W11 x1 is the volume fraction of uh, of uh, of um, of the one molecular or the opportunity of uh, exposing to uh, x1 molecular and same for x m2 you would get almost a symmetric equation except m2 we need to first to consider what is molecular q2 contacting molecular one two contacting one is opportunity of W12, that's cross um, color contact. Uh, X1 is basically the chances of meeting a molecular X1, right? Remember, this is M2 molecular. If you want to have the W interaction, you should have M2 contacting M1. And contacting to M1 is X1 opportunity. And the last one is X2 contacting um, molecular 2 will give you W22 interaction. Again, it's quite symmetric, but um, you need to know what specific meaning for each uh, component of the equation. So if I write, uh, wrote a physical meaning of it, there will be, we can call it white ball contacts white. So that's basically what is this. And this would be the a white ball contacts red okay and we have two terms so this would be a red ball contacts white and last is red ball contacts red so if we counting all this interactions then we should be good we got everything we needed to know in terms of what is uh, each component and what the potential role they play. Okay, so we're very close to get the enthalpy of mixing because we what we have now is we got the enthalpy of individual components and we got the enthalpy of both components before mixing. So if we kind of add everything together using a delta H mix term. So though you hope you can still see it. 
All right, perfect. So delta H is the final term. You need to get the solution or solvent or, or mixture, how, however you want to call it. This is the term we, we, we talked about. Minor is with the pure term, pure. So you can think about this toluene hexane mixture. This would be pure toluene, pure hexane. So your delta H is given by here. And we already know what is solvents, what is individual. I kind of listed them again in the bottom. Okay, so this you should be quite familiar with. And delta uh, H solvent is just the enthalpy of the whole components uh, in the sol solution mixed phase. And H1 and H2, you can think about just one is toluene, one is hexane. Um, Brian? I'm glad to give. Yes. I had trouble reading one of the equations you wrote in red. It was like the number of contacts for C11. See, so, yeah. If, it's not, if it wasn't on this page, it, was, it may have been on a previous page. Sure. I mean, it, sometimes I, I wrote the not exactly a C is basically concentration for species 1, and it's basically is X1. Okay. C11 is, is, is that the one, or let me make sure? Or you. It's it's, it's the one like the one where the arrow is pointing the first one on the top okay so here it's the one uh, in red though right c11 contact is equal to okay so here is what you talk about right i yes, circle sir. okay so this is not concentration so this c is is what we define as number of contacts because in the entropy, at the end of the day, um, we just need to understand how many contact points. So what the meaning for C11 is basically how many number of contacts. So if I throw, like, let's say 10 toluene there, that defines how many toluene is touching other. It's not a concentration. I saw you talk about when uh, way before. I'll, I'll go back to that and explain what, what I saw you were asking, but not the case. So here, C11 is basically tell, ask you to count how many count points of total in the system between uh, molecular species one versus one. So C11 basically is um, uh, let me write it one molecular number one touching molecular number one. Okay, it's just a number. So if I have two molecular white, C11 means there is only one pair of C11 interaction. Because as long as we multiply by number of contact, multiply by each energy it needs to be taken for such contact, then we can get the enthalpy. And each number of contact is just a W11 as we say that it's a generic interaction. So contact point multiplied by um, this particular uh, unit interaction between those contact points will give you total enthalpy. And so similarly, W12 is cross species and contacts numbers as well as contact uh, energy. Okay, yes, right. And let me go back to one more equation. This this is x x one. So this is basically what we have discussed here. Is similarly, that would be half of the energy. It's just consider the um, enthalpy in for the solvent for only considering this what uh, this red dots or basically Professor Gu here. So what is the energy for this guy to experience? As I we can directly wrote, this would be interaction with another male student or W11 and what's the chances of having it is basically X1. X is um, volume fraction um, and X2 multiplied by the W2. So if you look at this, this is very similar to the, the question we wrote. It basically can be rewritten as this would be equals to, we don't even need that, um, it's basically W11 multiplied by C11 divided by 2 plus W11 
um, 1, 1, 1, 2 multiplied by C, 1, 2 is equivalent for this part, what we wrote. Because contact points, we will later will see C11 would be exactly equals to um, half of M1 multiplied by um, Z and multiplied by X1. Okay? Right? So this is very much talks about the same thing. Yes, sir. Okay, so... We're now in a very good situation. We now get get all the expressions we have for solvent, <laughs> solvent one, solvent two. Now we need just uh, need to add everything and do some mass calculation. Um, quite straightforward. If you add everything in the equation below, you would get mix mixture of energy will equals to Coordination number Z divided by 2. Okay. And you would get what a, is contact after mixing for the species 1 and species 2. And minus M1 is contact of a solvent of enthalpy before mixing for species 1 and before mixing for species 2. I highlight color so that student can better see the differences so let me zoom out a little bit and hopefully everybody can still see them if we add everything together and do some mass calculation we can reach uh, a final form of this in terms of rearranging only have w11 w12 w11 and w22 you will see that we will be able to get an equation like the bottom those are some of the simple mass calculation in the between. There is nothing uh, uh, special in whatever we are trying to do in the middle. Okay, just to need to make sure you understand that what is n is equals to m one plus n two, um, x one plus x two would be equals to one. Um, then you would be able to solve this particular equation. Uh, and one more thing, let me also write down what is x one would it equals to m1 divided by n and x2 would be equals to n2 divided by n so with the knowledge of those informations you should be able to reach the last equation which is enthalpy of mixing now would be equal to n1 number of molecular 1 n2 number of molecular 2 Okay, those are just the numbers, so you can directly count in the lattice. In the last, for example, in a, in a 16 number of box, we would have M1 equals to 8, M2 equals to 8, and M is the total number of uh, box would be equal to 16. Okay, so you can sort of plug in those values and get some understanding what these first term is. So the delta H is proportional to how many um, number of molecular you add in. Z is lattice coordination number. Okay, now this part is important. What is W12 minus half of W11 and half W22? Okay, let me explain you in a very simple physics language. W11 is energy of bonding a molecular one with molecular two right and w11 is bonding the molecular one itself with itself and bonding molecular two with itself that means if i have sort of two magnets pair we put on the table in one case i need to break the magnetic force between one one and pull apart another red pair of magnet and now i need to reshuffle one red, one, one white, and one they reattach. That means what would be the energy of cutting of two molecular power and rearrange them. If if I rearrange the magnet and they somehow has stronger, much stronger force to attach them together, that means W12 is much higher than those two. Then I would have a positive en um, enthalpy. Um, or I could go other way. So now, the sign, if you were to get a positive H mixture or 
or negative is not clear, that will depend on what pairs you get. If you have a pair get stronger after mixing or if you get a weaker after mixing. Okay, we will go into a little bit detail. Actually, we can define a much easier term to describe what is this mixture is. That is a Flory Huggins parameter. And we can define this particular very long term with some help of other terms to be the Flory Huggins parameter. And listen carefully, this is probably the most important parts of the Poneman physics lecture. Chi is defined here. We call it a Chi. And full name is Flory Huggins theory and is probably the MVP inside the Poneman science. Flory is a very famous professor and he was um, a Nobel Prize winner. He wrote uh, authority textbooks in polymer chemistry. Um, and uh, although it's called polymer chemistry, but there's also physical chemistry in it. And the textbook you're reading today, oh, oops, dropped the book. This is the one that is wrote based upon that very famous textbook. Okay, so coming back to here. So this fully interaction parameter, um, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead of the lecture tell you. This is basically a parameter you can quantify if your species will interact with each other or not. I would call it as, um, a degree of dislike parameter. If some students uh, I'm confused about it. I can give you an example that if you have two kids, sometimes they love each other, sometimes they hate each other. So this will be the indicator. Uh, very high chi value means your two species are incompatible on, with each other. That means they will face separate. And if the chi value is low, that means there's a lot of degree of compatibility or you think those two uh, components like each other. So PS, uh, PMMA has very low chi value, for example, they are much easier to mix. And other species like PEO um, and PS, one is hydrophilic, the other is hydrophobic, are more likely to face separate and because they have much higher chi value. Okay, so coming back to the topic, once we define this, what is chi is basically, uh, is very much related to all the term above. We can now rewrite delta H mix into a very simple term. Because all the W1, W2, and W22, W12 is now rolled into this very simple chi term. So, what is delta uh, H mix? You will get what we show in the below. Because all we need to do is just replace a chi. Okay, with this. And that's what you should get. X1, X2, and KT. Any questions? So, uh, excuse me? Yeah. Can everybody hear me okay? Any feedback? If not, we're going to continue, okay? So that's what you would get. X1, X2, KT. That would be your... Um, your energy delta H palette is site. What this means is what how much energy you would uh, expect to have palette is site in terms of enthalpy contribution. Oh, okay, now it's very exciting because we have uh, finally reached a point that we get delta H, and previously we also have delta S. And now it is very simple for us to construct a final lattice series to understand what is enthalpy and entropy contribution to molecular mixing. Okay, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most exciting part of the day. We now reach the point where we can construct what delta G, the free energy gives free energy. 
you get the attack. Let me make it up to help Zoe to see it. Then. Okay, so, so delta G would it be equals to delta H minus delta T S. So what this means is now you can have those two terms. You can have delta S mix mixture of the um, uh, entropy contribution delta S delta H. And with those are we all discussed previously, right? So you should see them and quite familiar with them and we can write the equation into two two ways is number of molecular sites m1 or uh, moles of the molecular n1 and they're basically talk about the same so just as long as your your m is always go with k and small n is always going to go with r you will be fine in this particular case, we can just pick the RT as a constant term, and you will get what show here is the delta G mix. Okay, delta G mix for the system. And I outline what is entropy and entropy contribution. I want you to take a, take a few seconds to really appreciate this beautiful equations has been developed right here RT is a constant you know gas constant and T is temperature so those at a fixed temperature this will be a known value and will depend will not depends on anything that you throw into system um, and what how many moles of molecular one you put in long x1 x1 again is the volume fraction of what is a component of x1 so if it's a 50 50 blend uh, i'll give you a number if we blend one mole of toluene one mole of hexane we would be able to calculate what is the mixture energy we were going to do an exercise after we finish this i'll, I'll show you what it is that exactly the attitude would be then x1 would be 0 0.5 and one will be one mole so one log 0 0.5 would be mixture energy for phase one and this will be uh, one and two again it's one mole of hexane volume fraction of hexane is again x2 will be equals to one divided by two so this will be 0 0.1 multiply by n1 one mole of toluene x2 0 0.5 volume fra fraction of hexane multiplied by the chi value between the toluene and hexane okay so we would be able to get very good results between um between those different components and you will be able to calculate what the delta G if you know that what's the chi value, right? As I mentioned, this is the only unknown parameter and don't mix the X2 and chi. X2 is what we know is volume fraction for the second component. It's basically number of mo molecular divided by total number of molecular in the system. And chi is Flory Huggins parameter, the MVP uh, symbol we talk about. Um, so so in this case this model there's also some limitations we need to go through there is two limitations as shortly show here this is first is mostly is a mean field results what a mean field results means mean field that means we only consider the average of system and we assume that your polymer uh, sorry your solvent taking the same volume as the lattice and it does not change the volume after mixing so that's one of the limitations uh, in reality, no matter what you have, if you mix them, they will change the volume slightly. But it, it does not change the conclusion. It just gives it more precise in the equation. This model is only works for uh, low molecular components approximately same molar volume. Again, molar volume means if you one species is, is much bigger than the other, then if you feel the lattice, it will not satisfy the assumption that Component A and component B I have the same space occupying one lattice space. 
if B is so small, it can put two inside of one lattice, then that's a different story. And that's not the whole point of today's lecture. Okay, so before we go on, I'm going to give uh, everybody an um, example of, let me create a one more slide, insert, new slides. I'll help everybody understand what's going on by giving you an example. So how about we do a quick example of what we have been talked about. How about we mix one more let me write it a little more clear. One more of toluene and one more of cyclohexane. And assuming we know already their chi value is about 0 0.1, 0 0.24. And the question is, will they mix or not? We're going to apply the knowledge, what we learned in those two lectures, and address this problem. So how are we going to start to get this issue? Where are we going to get a, hand, get a hold of our results? Anyone? Any comments? Any suggestions? Okay, how about, uh, let's see. Uh, James, do you have any input? Okay, I don't think James is there. Or I, I hear someone, I see Brian raised the hand and who has is speaking, can you say it loudly? You need to use the uh, moles of toluene and cyclohexane to solve for X1 and X2. Okay, yeah, that's right, partially. And um, Brian, do you have anything to add on? So, Brian, please, you can discuss. Okay, no worry. So, Let's look at what is delta G. I think at the end of the day, the, what you should learn in this lecture is what is delta G value will determine what is it will mix or not. Delta GM will be delta G if it's bigger or smaller than zero, it will give you different trends, right? So we need to calculate what is delta G. If it's bigger than zero, that means they're gonna not gonna mix. If it's smaller than zero, that means they're gonna mix spontaneously, okay? Does this make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. I was just checking the list. Looks like James happened to miss the the class. I, what the odds that I call in some students? randomly and he is not in the classroom anyway so we can apply what we learn in what we show in long x2 plus n1 x2 and chi right so this is what we learn in this lecture what is each individual components are so let's take a look each parts n1 as we know this is a number of modes for tolling what is n1 Everybody, what is N1? Just one. Just one, right? So what is about X1? One half. X1 is one half. So, sorry, let me write it correctly. So one it is one the line 0 0.5. Plus you would have N2 is also one more and line 0.5. So it's a little bit tricky for the last part. We again have one mole of N1 multiplied by X2 would be equals to 0 0.5 and multiplied by chi. And chi already give you 
0.24. So if you do the calculation, you will get minus 0 0.693 plus 0 0.12. And if we combine everything together, you will get minus 1.2. That means your delta G is negative. And this should promote the spontaneous mixing because system always want to relax to lower uh, energy level and delta G is negative. That means if we, after mixing the total system's free energy is lower than what is happens before. So it's going to go down here. And if you compare, this will be again the entropy contribution and this is would be entropy contribution. So in this case, your entropy is, is much, much bigger than enthalpy, right? As you can see, if you add everything together, it's about um, probably about minus 1.4 in terms of total entropy in the mixing. And that's about one order of magnitude bigger than enthalpy. Enthalpy is only 0 0.12. This is minus 1.4. So you can see it in this case your entropy of mixing is much bigger and entropy it is a driving force for the system to uh, mix okay so Dr. yeah Jalen please um, so it might be kind of obvious in this example here uh, because our temperature would be in Kelvin and R is uh, positive that it wouldn't matter what the values of those are but in general would temperature not play a role and whether the two solutions mix or not? Uh, very good question. In reality, the temperature will play a role. And the where it play a role is actually not in RT term. So let me go back one slide. I'm going to keep it. It's not played in this term. Slide show. Very good question and very good observation. So Jalen asked if the temperature will play a role in terms of mixing and if you watch carefully, you know, uh, some of the solvents will face separate at higher temperature, some of them will face separate lower temperature. Actually, this will be a topic of today, uh, a future class. It's called LCST or UCST. So for now, you just need to know the acronym. So solvents do face separate or mix depends on different uh, um, temperature. And this is actually encoded in the chi parameter. I'm gonna just to jump ahead of time in terms of discuss what is chi is actually a temperature dependent uh, property, and uh, you can generally written as chi equals to a plus b minus t, and this a and b are constant value empirical constant, and they would depends on what species what the molecule you put there. But if you add all of them together, they would give you a temperature dependent term because now you have temperature here. So by changing the temperature, you're effectively changing the chi value. And the chi value would be impacting on if your system is mixing or not mixing. And I'm going to go into later um, in the polymer solvent mixing, then you will see your entropy term is not going to be as big as we show here. In here, this is about minus 1.4, this is 1.2. So if you have some minor changes in the in the entropy, it's not going to be competing with this guy. He, he is like a Mike Tyson, and this is a random person trying to wrestle with him. There is no chance that he's going to win. But if somehow the entropy is go down, it's like normal size, then you would have opportunity to out compete them, right? And that's what we're going to talk about in, in the next lecture about Flory Hagen theory. Up to now, we only talked about lattice theory. And the difference between lattice and Flory Hagen theory is two folds. First is show here. Here is a lattice theory, which um, mostly apply to solvents mixture. And what is this matters is because solvents only occupy one lattice space. So as you show here, all the red, uh, all the sorry, in this case is black and white. All the black and white dots only occupy a single lattice space. Okay. 
it's like a communism. Everybody has one property. So now in the polymer cases where now you have a polymer chain, we no longer can see in the polymer going to occupy one lattice space. It's actually going to occupy multiple lattice spaces as shown in this black, um, those connected dots, as you see. They are walking around this lattice like a maze, but actually the point is to show they're connected. Same in this case, we show there's three polymers and each of the polymer has DP or degree of polymerization of 13 and we can assume they're going to occupy 3 multiplied by 13 by 39 lattices and this causes a big problem remember in the last assumption we said in the lattice theory they, this applies only to um, two small molecular system and what can we do? Um, how can we address this problem if we put a polymer in a solvent, which is more relevant to what we are trying to do in a lot of real cases, you're not mixing toluene to hexane, but you're mixing polystyrene in hexane, right? So what can we do? Any, any thoughts and inputs? We probably won't have enough time to go through every single detail, but I'll touch base what would be the conclusion is all right so Brian do you want to give a shot I know you're very very engaged in the class Brian Uh, uh, yeah, I can repeat the question. So, if 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 you were sitting in my chair, what what would you think about we can address this problem of connectivity? Compare the polymer solution versus a low molecular weight solution mixture. Account for parameters in which describe points as connected to each other. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. I mean. The whole purpose of we talked about two to three lecture in the Latin series is to serve the purpose to explain Flory Hagen theory. So I assuming they must be connected to some way, right? Yes, sir. Any thoughts? Um, would it be through selected volume, volume of connected species of other chains? That's a very good point. I think you got the you got it. And this is a kind of show here. So what's the difference of you having throwing a giant molecular in those small molecular is now instead of saying your your polymer would occupy in one lattice, we just count how many lattice your polymer would occupy. And now you can see the volume fraction will be different. If I mix one mole of toluene, one mole of um, polystyrene, I cannot get a uh, molar volume fraction will be one divided by two, right? I need to get a new term, how much volume fraction. And apparently one mole of toluene is uh, not gonna be making, uh, occupying the same volume fraction compared to uh, mixing with small molecule. So that is definitely need to be revised and rest. So we know that In the case here, let me zoom in. This likely need, would need to be updated, what we show in the X2. N1, N2 is fixed, right? So X1 need to be updated. And how about the enthalpy term? Likely need to be updated, what is volume fraction of X, uh, X2, right? Because it's no longer can be assumed to be mixing like molecules. So we need to shuffle around and get the new values for the volume fraction. And additionally, the enthalpy it will be need to be updated, not only here, but generally because of connectivity, the N2 term will need to update. So let's take a look what it is will be look like. So we can get, again, 
have the volume fraction now instead of write x1 we write phi1 so let me clarify x1 we just use it exclusively for small molecule just to to, um, to differentiate in the flory hogging theory and lattice theory okay and we can use phi1 specifically for uh, flory hogging theory there but excuse me okay so uh, so as you can see here now the next step what we need to do is just to compare what is need to be considered in terms of volume fraction so v1 v2 because of v2 we now each one has occupying by n lattice now we need to consider what the volume of v2 will be like volume of the v2 is no longer like just simply counting of lattice you need also to see how much v2 is occupying each lattice and this is defined by this n term n is basically how much lattice now your new molecular would be occupying okay we can just assume for example each monomer would occupy a lattice then your n will be equals to dp the higher the molecular weight the higher the degree of polymerization it will occupy more lattice like we show here and you can get a new value of phi1 and phi2 volume fraction of the solvents volume fraction of the polymer and in the turn the only difference is there will be volume fraction will be equals to n multiplied by m2 no, how many moles of your um, polymer okay and compared to the x2 which is very straightforward since everything is occupied uh, one lattice if you lower this n value if it's equals to one then you would be able to comp compare the phi2 uh, converted to x2 if n is equal to one right we can simplify this for the hanging series to lattice series again now um, we, we're going to probably stop here and come back in the next lecture to discuss what would be uh, different ways we need to consider in Flory Huggins and Lattice theory. Let's first to jump to the conclusion. So here is the conclusion part. And what you have seen here is basically um, not exactly the case. Here you go. You will see this delta G in terms of Flory Hagen theory is very similar to the lattice theory. Delta G mix will be equal to, let's look at uh, this particular equation, KT, Boltzmann constant temperature, phi1 is volume fraction of solvents, log in phi1 is volume fraction of solvents again, and phi2 is volume fraction of the uh, a polymer and divided by n n is how many um, lattice sites per polymer occupy you can think about it just the degree of polymerization term for the simplicity and line phi 2 and multiply plus phi 1 phi 2 chi if you compare it to what is lattice series it's almost identical except now we have this phi 2 divided by n term for some reason showed up okay so the entropy in the previous case is x1 log in phi x1 x2 log in x2 so this is a pretty much the same except this n term there and in the entropy of mixing it's almost the same as n1 x2 fine it's you know there's no difference only difference when you mix a polymer in there is your entropy is dropped because of this divide by n term, if we go back to the equation we we did together, okay. So let's discuss about a hypothetical the polystyrene sample with 
n of a thousand and we assume chi is again equals to 0 0.5 we can go back to plug in the exactly same equation almost right so you would have um, phi 1 ln phi 1 plus phi 2 divided by n ln phi 2 so this we again tell you it's going to be one mole plus y1 phi 2 uh, chi so if you add everything together you will see the entropy because of this as enter this is almost close to zero because when n is infinitely big you'll you don't have any value left because it will be divided by a thousand so effectively your entropy of mixing is greatly reduced because of the connectivity of the polymer okay so that makes polymer solvent mixing is much harder than small molecular small molecular mixing there's a lot of entropy is driving the toluene and hexane mixing together but there's not a lot of entropy when you mix polymer and the uh, toluene so in more extreme case, if we consider polyethylene plus polystyrene mixture, you would additionally lose entropy of mixing because now you need to consider what is the mixing in terms of entropy contribution in the system. They both need to divide by n. Now go back. If n is about a thousand times bigger, so you think about the case here if we divide by this by a thousand you will see now your entropy of mixing is smaller than the entropy it was only 10 times bigger than the entropy uh, uh, so sorry the entropy was only 10 times bigger than entropy if we consider the dp of a thousand then you suddenly drop the entropy by a factor of a thousand then your entropy will dominate so that's why in plastic engineering, if you throw two polymer and trying to mix them, it's very hard. The difficulty comes from there's no driving force for them to mix. The only way you can make two plastic mix is use a competitor or really get something have high value is as low as possible because there's no way we can increase the entropy. The only thing we can change is make sure the entropy is as small as possible. Okay, so any question for today's lecture for me? And we will continue to discuss the Flory Huggins theory a little bit when we start next Tuesday. Any question for me, please? Um, is it important for us to understand how we get each equation, which we ultimately use to find the entropy in terms of the lattice theory, or is the final equation the most important part? Uh, if I have to say, his very very important for the final part it is uh, also important in the derivation you understand where the entropy contribution come from but it's not as critical as final answer okay yes, sir. Um, but I would encourage you to go back to um, get a, a few understanding about how the entropy and entropy play a role in the mixing and some of the homework will help you i will start assign uh, once we finish the flory hugging theory i'm going to start begin to assign homework and you will you will get a sense of how we can apply the what we learn in the classroom to the homework okay more questions folks yeah that's a good uh, hey um, mm. So I'm, so I'm looking at the final delta G mix for the floor of against bigger regardless. So in real polymer systems, how do you quantify it in, or like how do you define the lattice? A uh, very good question. So uh, in this case, we just take a lazy way. We assume n will be equal to degree of permutation. We assume okay. the monomer unit will be equal to the lattice units. I mean, it's a simplification, but it's uh, it's a good starting point. Okay, yeah. and so if you have dp of a sound then that's what will be the n will be very good question Jalen okay so
Um, for the next class, we're going to start a lecture with a, a short quiz to cover what we have talked about entropy and entropy ports in the lattice theory and um, everybody should get prepared. So um, I'll see everybody on next Tuesday. And, um, and if there's no more question, we can end the class now. Okay, and keep in touch.